Hey everyone, and welcome back to Blackthorn Prod. Me and my brother Liam have a new nighttime routine. We try creating a small game in a couple minutes, between 10 and 30 minutes to be exact. This short yet intense game creation sprint was inspired by Bracky's new video, where he challenges himself to create a small game in barely 10 minutes. It was loads of fun to watch, and also seemed like a great way to come up with game ideas, try wacky new things, and take loads of bold, risky decisions. My first game based on the Bracky's challenge, made in roughly 10 minutes using of course Unity and C Sharp, sees the player manipulating circles with the mouse. These circles are randomly moving around the scene, and the player must do his best to stop these from touching each other. It's actually pretty fun, but what was more fun was creating it. It was 10 minutes of pure, hectic game dev. No longer did I feel the burden of having to come up with the perfect game idea. It didn't matter whether what I made was boring, ugly, stupid, unplayable, or confusing, because I was only spending a couple minutes on it anyway. The second time I tried making a game in a few minutes was as much fun. I ended up creating a character that can move around the tiny world and must dodge enemies by teleporting himself around that world and destroy those red foes with fat, juicy bombs. I don't think my keyboard ever recovered properly from that experience. Then for the third challenge, I made a strange dodging reflex game, where you rotate a stick with two heads using your mouse cursor and move it around the scene with the arrow keys. You almost feel like an agile ninja when you escape a tight spot. In short, I've loved making these mini games. It almost feels like tiny game jams. And so I've decided to make another small game from scratch in under 10 minutes in this video. It's going to be a simple reflex game where the player controls a character that can shoot square, triangular, and circular projectiles at a bunch of square, triangular, and circular enemies. Square projectiles destroy square enemies, circular projectiles obliterate circular enemies, and so on. And if you use the wrong projectile on a wrong enemy, it's game over. Now, I've already created this game, and was able to do so in exactly 11 minutes and 12 seconds. Now, I'll try and do that again, only in 10 minutes or less. Now, of course, 10 minutes is extreme, and I'm only trying to beat my previous game creation record for the sake of this video. But the main message I want to pass on here is that you should also try making games in a very short period of time. Not only is it incredibly fun, but you'll gain valuable experience, expand your portfolio, wash out from your system all kinds of bad ideas you thought might be cool until then, and maybe even come up with an extremely fun or interesting prototype you can then expand on and turn into a full-fledged commercial product. With that said, I'll open up Unity, Photoshop, and begin hacking at my keyboard like a maniac in 3, 2, 1, go. Alright, here we go, we're gonna start by creating some game art, I'm gonna jump inside of Photoshop and create the player character, look at him. And then I'm gonna create his three mighty projectiles, the square, the triangle, and the circle. I'm gonna get a deep, bright red and create the three enemies of the, yeah, those three shapes. Look at that, amazing game art here. I'm gonna crop this Photoshop file, disable the background layer so that it is transparent and export it as a PNG. And I'm gonna call this characters. All right, I'm gonna open up Unity now. And I'm going to, of course, slice up these various sprites so they become individual sprites because right now they're not. It's just one big bloated sprite sheet. Definitely don't want that. So let me slice these up. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. We all know that every single second counts. <laughs> all right, slicing these. Come on. I wish I could do this faster. And I'm going to hit apply to save those settings. Drag and drop the player. Uh, come on. Try and drop the player into the scene view, and move him right to the left of the screen, and I'm gonna add the player character C Sharp script. Let's open that up inside of Visual Studio, which I which I pray and open up fast, it does. Let's create a public game object array called projectiles. And I'm gonna check whether I'm gonna yeah, check whether the player hits the dot get key down. Kiko.a. So if the player hits the A key on the keyboard, then I'm going to simply instantiate or spawn the projectile of index 0. 
In other words, the very first thing we drag and drop inside of the Protocols array. And I'm going to spawn that at the player's position and with no rotation. I really wish I could type faster than I am. Else if. So if the player doesn't hit A but hits the Z key on the keyboard. And knows that I'm using an Azure keyboard which is why I'm choosing the AZ keys because they're right next to each other. Then I'm simply going to spawn the second game object inside of the project tiles array. And then I'm going to um, check if he hits the E key and if he does, let's spawn the second project tile. Uh, basically the third element inside of the game object, uh, inside of this project tiles array. I'm not making sense right now because I need to do this very, very fast. Alright, I'm going to drag and drop into the scene view these three project tiles, add to them a 2D box collider so they can detect collisions and detect if they're hitting enemies. And I'm going to set this to trigger and add a project tile script to all of these three game objects. Let's open that up instead of Visual Studio. Create a public float speed variable. And I'm going to get these moving uh, to the left. Vector 2 dot, no, to the right. What am I saying? Dot right times speed times time dot delta time. So now these project tiles will simply be moving towards the right side of the screen, which is exactly what I want. I'm also going to create three new tags, one called square, the other called circle, and the other, of course, you guessed it, triangle. I'm going to give to the square um, project tile the triangle tag, nope, the square tag, to the uh, triangle the triangle tag, and to the circle the circle tag. Obviously, that makes sense. And let's turn these three into a prefab. No renaming, no time for renaming. Delete them from the scene view. Drag and drop these three enemies now. I'm going to add to all of those three. A simple 2D box collider, set that to trigger. We're going to add a rigid body to these, so collisions will be detected nicely. Get rid of the don't want them falling. And add the enemy tag, or enemy enemy. Oh, quick, 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 quick. I don't know how much time I have left. I hope I still have loads. Public float speed void in the void update. I'm going to get these moving towards the right. So vector, no, what am I saying? The left, ugh, left, right, uh, speed times time dot delta time. All right, we're doing great, guys. And of course, let's create the void on trigger enter 2D function. And this is going to allow me to detect if the enemy collides with a projectile. And if it does and the projectile has the same tag as the enemy, then all is good. I'm simply going to destroy the enemy character. And I'm also going to destroy the projectile and the player basically, yeah, he did well and the game can continue. If not, though, if the player used the wrong projectile on the wrong enemy, quick, 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 then we're simply going to reload the scene because it's game over. We don't have time to make a game over scene, so we're simply going to reload the scene in a very snappy and ugly way, scene management. And the way we do that is by writing scene manager .load scene scene manager uh, dot get active scene dot build index Whew. okay and obviously if you don't understand this stuff go to my channel i've got loads of tutorials on the topic opening up unity come on let's quickly wait till this all compiles it does a uh, speed i think speed of five is completely fine i'm going to add to the square enemy the square tag to the triangular enemy the triangular tag and to the circle the circular tag. Let's turn all these three into a prefab. And all we need to do now is, whoops, is create the spawner script and get these enemies spawning at regular intervals of time. So create an empty game object, add the spawner script to it. I'm speaking so fast, I hope I'm making sense. Um, public float start time between spawn. So this is gonna be how much time do we want between each enemy spawn and private float time between spawn. Then I'm gonna create a public game object array where we will store all of the enemy characters, enemies. And in the update function, I have no clue how much time I've left, I hope I still have left. Uh, all right, all right, all right. I'm gonna check whether time between spawn is less or equal to zero. And if it's not less or equal to zero, then I'm gonna gradually decrease time between spawn using minus equals time dot delta time. If it is less or equal to zero, that means it's time to spawn an enemy. So I'm going to instantiate an enemy. What enemy you ask? I don't know. It's going to be a random enemy. So here for random dot range zero enemies dot length 
There we go. And it's gonna be there. Ran. I have no more time to explain. Um, no. Rand and at what position? Simply, we're gonna do it at the spawner's position and with no rotation. We don't care about the rotation. And don't forget to reset time between spawn equal to start time between spawn. This way, the enemies spawn at regular intervals of time. And that's really it. Let's wait for units to compile. It better be quick. It doesn't seem as if I've added the script as I have. That was just a bug. Uh, let's get them. <clears throat> let's get the enemies spawning every two seconds. I'm gonna drag and drop. Uh, I'm gonna lock the inspector actually and drag and drop all three enemies inside of the enemy's uh, array. Then I'm gonna grab the player, uh, lock the inspector there, and drag and drop the three projectiles. And I'm going to finally, finally, what? Oh, all right, quick, square tag, triangle tag. Oh no, inspector! I love the inspector. Circle, triangle, square, perfect. And we don't want the player to no. Uh, oh, of course, if the player collides with an enemy, so uh, we're gonna simply get him. No, actually, what am I doing? Is more. I think it'll work more if I detect, if I try and detect whether an enemy s collides with the player. So if other dot compare tag player, so if what the enemy collides with is a player, then I'm simply going to scene manager. Well, you know, basically I'm gonna reload the scene again because it's game over again. Ah, I think I'm done. Let's press, uh, oh, let's add to the player, quick. Let's add to the player a circle collider 2D so collisions are detected and hit play finally. I think we're good. I can spawn projectile, oh. Projectiles, quick, add some speed, 10. I think it's good. And yes, I can shoot projectiles, and if run projectile, collect, yes, okay, and reload the scene. So if I spawn, uh, okay, then I reload the scene again. So there, normally if the square collides with a square, all is good, and all is good, perfect. Great, and we finished creating this little game, yeah. Whoa, so as you saw, that was pretty hectic and messy. And again, 10 minutes is extreme. 30 minutes to a few hours is really great though. A few months ago, I was making loads of little games in under four hours, around a theme that my brother would impose on me. There's something just so refreshing about creating little prototypes quickly, making quick art and smashing into existence lines upon lines of messy code. Also try taking part in game jams, which are crazy game creation events that challenge developers to make a game in usually a few days and around a given theme. Ladam Dare is a game jam that takes place three times a year and where you must try and make a game in two or three days. Heck, I'm also organizing my own game jam that starts tomorrow and which lasts one week. Make sure to check out my video on why game jams are amazing events to take part in and how you can make the most out of them. So the punchline here is create lots of prototypes, flush out from your system bad ideas and get used to failing get used to making loads of bad games. It's by doing so that you'll eventually end up making amazing things. With that said, see you tomorrow where I'll announce the theme of the very first Blackthorn Prod Game Jam at 12 p.m. French time. Before leaving, here's also a big thank you to these amazing people for supporting me financially via Patreon. If you also want to support me and my channel, consider donating a dollar or more per month via Patreon or simply hitting the like and subscribe buttons. It would be so appreciated and incredibly encouraging. All right, stay tuned. See you very soon. Cheers.